Hello and welcome to section three, part two of ITIL four specialist drive stakeholder value certification training program. In this section, we are going to be focused on a couple of the practices which support the drive stakeholder value. Firstly, we begin with the relationship management practice. Relationship management is one of the general management practices. Here we will know how this practice can be applied to enable and contribute to fostering relationships. First, the purpose. The purpose of the relationship management practice is to establish and nurture the links between the organization and its stakeholders at strategic and tactical levels. So there are two levels here, strategic, which is the long term, or the higher level and the medium short term the tactical level which is more a procedural level it includes the identification analysis monitoring and continual improvement of relationships with and between stakeholders generally when organizations get into relationship with each other that has to be managed properly using this practice the practice can address relationship between individuals teams or larger groups of stakeholders meaning it need not be always large organizations it can be between two individuals or two groups also this practice is affected by the following factors and these are known as the practice success factors a success factor for a practice is something which is required for the practice to succeed there are three of them here establishing and continually improving an effective approach to relationship management across the organization meaning there should be some approach for relationship management which should be effective second ensuring effective and healthy relationships within the organization so once the approach is established then that approach has to be used properly by which those relationships will be ensured lastly ensuring effective and healthy relationships between the organization and its external stakeholders. Therefore, the approach should facilitate both the internal relationships and the external ones. Let's take a look at these success factors one by one. The first one, establishing and continually improving an effective approach to relationship management across the organization. So the focus is on the approach. It should be based on a common set of values and principles adopted by everyone in the organization. There may be certain values, for example, keeping commitments, maintaining trust, or uh, a way of dealing between individuals and teams, which may be effective. And that approach may be used within the organization and with external stakeholders. Applied in conjunction with others, meaning other practices, workforce and talent management, strategy management, supplier management, and so on. Which means there will be relationship management within the workforce, within the suppliers, and when strategy is implemented, defined and implemented. And it is applied with the other practices in order to develop, communicate, and maintain a set of values and principles for relationships. The second practice success factor, ensuring effective and healthy relationships within the organization. So it's an internal aspect. How to do this? Employee and customer satisfaction is correlated to successful relationships with external parties. Successful internal relationships is an important prerequisite for a successful external relationship. Which means if the internals are good, then the externals are also good. A person usually belongs to multiple groups. Parent, the same person could be a parent, could be a developer, photographer, Indian, etc. This combination influences how stakeholders perceive value. You know, while one stakeholder could be these three, developer, photographer, Indian, another stakeholder could be a parent in addition to the remaining three. So it will influence how they will perceive value. Ignoring these combinations may lead to conflicts, alliances, misunderstandings, and insights that eventually create risks or opportunities of various kinds. 
Relationship mapping exercises, formal or informal, can help understand the dynamics of internal relationships. So mind maps could be used to draw the connections between the various parties. How does one know another? If I know somebody, does somebody else also know them? So such kind of maps could be drawn. And the strengths of the relationships can also be scored. The last practice success factor, ensuring effective and healthy relationships between the organization and its external stakeholders, external ones. Organizations are both service providers and service consumers and so have to manage relationships in both roles. As we know, service relationship is a chain. A provider provides service to a customer, a consumer, that consumer is a provider to another consumer and so on. Therefore, as service providers, organizations should ensure that sponsors, customers and users, which are the consumer roles, they are satisfied and managed. And the conflicting interests should be managed. As service consumers, organizations should ensure that relationships with suppliers and partners are providing necessary value. So both providers and consumers have a responsibility in, in the relationship aspect with the other party. Supplier management, architecture management, service level management, or other practices which can support this relationship management from a value perspective. Other non-relationship non-service relationships with stakeholders may be identified through PESEL model. Go because there may be relationship with government agencies, society, investors. So the PESEL model may give hints on what are the external entities with whom relationships will be necessary or will be formed. Let us move on to another practice, the supplier management practice. The idea behind these practices is they are closely connected with driving stakeholder value. Know how the supplier management practice can be applied to enable and contribute to supplier and partner relationships management. Firstly, the purpose of this practice. The purpose of the supplier management practice is to ensure that the organization suppliers and their performances are managed appropriately to support the seamless provision of quality products and services. Seamless means borderless, meaning the consumer or customer need not know who are the who is delivering. They are more concerned about what is being delivered. This includes creating closer, more collaborative relationships with key suppliers to uncover and realize new value and reduce the risk of failure. The supplier management is like vendor management or sourcing management. Sourcing strategies should support the organization's overall strategy and define which of the organization's resources should be created and managed internally which may be obtained and obtained from and or managed by third parties and to what extent and the overall approach to the management of third party services. In general, the supplier management practice is used to create a single point of visibility for all suppliers. Particularly if this uh, integrator integration model is used. Um, so that there is consistency and there is value realization. Supplier management practice also ensures that agreements with suppliers are aligned with expected service outcomes and consumer needs uh, alignment with the consumer needs. And supplier management needs to monitor the performance of the suppliers to ensure that the terms and conditions and various targets are met. Therefore, supplier management should answer several questions. For example, is the provider effective and efficient? when managing its own partners and suppliers? Does the provider rely on strategic suppliers? What is the possible impact of the supplier shutdown due to service um, op uh, shutdown? If they shut down, then how does it impact the service operation? Yeah, and all other suppliers integrated in the provider's value chain and so on.
know the practice success factors, three of them. Ensuring that the sourcing strategy and guidelines effectively support the organization's strategy. Ensuring that service relationships with all suppliers and partners are managed effectively and aligned with internal and external regulations. So sourcing strategy is the first success factor. They should support the strategy of the organization. And secondly, the relationships have to be managed and aligned with regulations. And lastly, effective integration of third-party services into the products 